Hey everybody, welcome to the next video on um, this uh, quicker lesson. This is going to be on Iceberg Catalog. So again, Iceberg Catalogs matter because they're essentially going to be the main way engines are going to interface with your Iceberg tables. So there are different things that can be used as catalogs and not all engines support all catalogs. Um, I would say, but I mean, at least that's the current state of things. And again, this is like in Q3 2022. So hopefully in the future, generally, most engines will eventually support all catalogs. But the question is, what can be used as a catalog? And that's the thing. The catalog can be a lot of different things can be used as a catalog. It just needs something to kind of track what is that new, that latest metadata.json? What what is it? And basically, because of that, also generally we use the locking mechanism on that catalog, and that's going to allow a lot of the concurrency guarantees or the asset guarantees. Um, it really does provide a, a value uh, to the iceberg table, and because it fills that role, you're not dependent on the file system. Okay, that's one of the places where Iceberg really departs from the Hive table format and where other competing formats uh, didn't as much, where they, they still do rely a lot on the way like files are laid out. Well, Iceberg files can kind of technically be anywhere as long as they're listed in those manifests. Um, and as long as that you have a catalog to tell you, hey, where to kind of find that metadata tree to kind of figure that out. And then you're good to go. And that makes you more nimble for different types of uh, storage contexts and whatnot particularly for like cloud storage, because then you're, you can split up your files based on uh, best practices for object storage to avoid a lot of the possible throttling when you're using something like an S3 or whatnot that might happen when you put everything in sort of like the same directory, because uh, there would be known as a prefix and you'd hit throttling when you're requesting too many files in the, what seems like the same folder. So a couple examples, like Project Nessie is actually a open source project that was really created for the purpose of acting as a catalog. So it's like literally created for the purpose of being a catalog for something like an iceberg table. And because of that, it gives you extra features because it's built to operate as that. So it actually has a git like functionality. So that means you can actually branch your at the catalog level. Like there's others. There's there's other things that try to do like git like semantics, whether it's at the file level or at the table level. Um, but the benefit of it of doing it at the catalog level is like think about sort of like how git works or generally how versioning works what you're doing is you're tracking changes between point a and point b and point c and point d so if you're doing it at the file level and you're tracking the changes of each individual file you're tracking a lot of a lot of small differences across small objects okay uh while the difference here when you're doing it at the catalog level what you're doing is you're capturing the differences in the metadata so essentially what you're capturing is like okay um the, the changes from in between the manifests the manifest lists and and the metadata.json's um not between every individual file because again generally in iceberg you're not editing the file so the files never really change you're just writing new files so you're just capturing sort of the, you know what is the newest creating different branches of snapshots um which means you, you can make a lot you can support a lot more throughput when you're trying to capture lots of updates than you could have with like sort of more traditional sort of git file diffs um which is pretty nice and but you're doing it so you're doing it at the catalog level you're capturing changes across multiple tables so that way when you merge that data back in there you capture it as sort of one big multi-table transaction so you can actually end up having multiple changes to multiple tables all go live simultaneously uh, to all your data consumers, which is really cool. And the nice thing about Project Nessie is that there's actually a cloud managed service. So that way you don't have to worry about setting up your own Nessie server or anything like that. You can just use Dremu's Arctic service, which basically gives you not only the ability to use Arctic in this cloud managed way, but it gives you a really nice user interface that makes it really easy to do branching, managing, audit, like your commits for the different, uh, your different pieces of data. It's pretty cool. Um, the bad side, or like the cons, is that at this point in juncture, um, I wouldn't say there's that much support for uh, Nessie beyond Spark and Dremio. But if that's what you use, then Nessie works really, really well. And it's probably going to be sort of like the ideal solution because it gives you all that extra functionality. Um, again, more than likely, if you're watching this like in the future from when I recorded this, which is Q3 of 2022, um, Nessie should have probably more support among different engines. So 
it's definitely over time the way to go. Um, and generally, if you're not going to use Dremu's Arctic service, then you would have to then deploy your own Nessie server um, and maintain it. So uh, you can do that. Again, it's just it's open source, so basically you have the option to go uh, set up your server and do that. Um, you can use a Hive Metastore. This is a good option if you already have a Hive Metastore running. So this way you have all your Hive tables that are benefiting from the Hive Metastore. Um, and then you can also, in that same Metastore, track the, those, those metadata JSON, uh, dot JSON pointers so that way your, your engines can then figure out, hey, where, where are my iceberg tables? Um, that way you don't have to worry about deploying an additional service of any sort. You just use a service you already have running. Um, if you don't have a Hive Metastore, then, then you know, again, I would probably explore Project Nessie uh, instead of just deploying a Hive Metastore just for the purpose of using it as a me as a iceberg catalog. But again, very convenient if you already have that Hive Metastore in, uh, uh, in 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 place. Then you can use the AWS Glue catalog, um, which is really convenient, especially if you're using other AWS services like using AWS Athena. Um, uh, to 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 run some ad hoc queries uh, using AWS Glue for ingestion, um, then this works really well. You can just basically use that as the the thing that tracks your iceberg tables, and it has pretty support, good support. So you can support uh, AWS, um, but basically with support outside of AWS, you can definitely use Spark and Dremio to access your uh, iceberg tables in AWS Glue. But again. Uh, far as like other engines go, you'd have to go engine by engine to see do they support the use of an AWS Glue catalog. Like I think there's engines there that only support like a Hive Metastore. Um, so again, that's going to be one of the things that you want to think about when you're trying to decide what um, what catalog you want to use. Also, is also what tools you want to use to make sure that the tools that you are using support the catalogs you plan on using. Um, because you know, use a, a catalog they don't support, then you might you might have to well use different, there's different solutions. You can like shuffle your tables between catalogs, but that then gets a little messy. So again, taking a, doing some research on catalog support will will save you a lot of frustration later on. But generally, these three are going to be pretty well supported across most tools. Um, again, it just depends on like. Hey, do I already am I already using AWS? Then probably AWS Glue is going to make sense. Do I already have a Hive Metastore? Then Hive that's going to make sense. If neither of those things are true, and you want the extra cool Git features and the branching and the merging, um, it's always cool to use Project Nessie, and it's as easy as starting up a a, a a Dremio Arctic account, which is free, so you can have free access to it, and you know say, hey, I'm going to have some tables here or all my tables here, and um, again, uh, Arctic will also eventually have cool optimization services where like automate things like compaction and ingestion so that's that's that the value proposition of that will just continue to grow now there are other options like there's hdfs um so that means you can actually just use the which really just really just means the file system so you, whether it doesn't mean you're has to be using the Hadoop file system you could be using uh s3 or something like that but essentially what it's doing is it's using the file system as your catalog and it's really depending on the file layout to determine like hey where my tables are at um which is fine, you know, when you're experimenting and just learning how to use. So in some of the hand-on exercises in this course, I will probably be using HDFS as our catalog, um, but not generally not recommended for production. You're generally going to want to use some sort of catalog for the asset guarantees and the the concurrency benefits. JDBC. Uh, here's another thing. Like, what what if you have a Postgres database that's already sort of like just, you know, already operational? Uh, in your in your stack, you could use that Postgres database or a DynamoDB or really any database that supports the JDBC uh, implementation of Iceberg, and you can connect to it and use that as your um, as your catalog. And then there's a new REST catalog, which to understand sort of like what the REST catalog does, the idea is this: this is going to this is going to make it a lot easier for people to create services, uh, catalog services. Uh, around iceberg because what's going to happen is that it'll create like like um, an API or a, a standard API that different potential catalogs can use so basically you might actually have different catalogs behind the hood but they're all going to use the same rest implementation like they're all going to have the same like API endpoints and whatnot so you know you might have like five companies offering you sort of rest uh, 
iceberg catalog services um, and you'll be able to use the same catalog implementation that's in the iceberg library to connect to all of them because they're all adopting the same sort of API standard which is essentially kind of like how like Nessie works so like when, when you're using the Nessie catalog there's that Nessie server and it's making API calls to it to, to, to do to undergo a lot of its operations um, but the rest catalog is just like a recent addition which is right now just currently a standard API and a standard interface to the API um, I don't think at this point anyone's actually implemented like created like an actual service that implements this rest API that you can then take advantage of yet but again this is Q3 2022 and who knows what will happen by the time you're actually watching this video okay um, the most recent release at the, this point was point 14 and there they added a register table method now this is important because what it does it makes it easy to switch between catalogs so let's say you're using Hive Metastore and you know because you have a Hive Metastore and you are registering your iceberg tables in there but later on you decide to use Project Nessie you're like okay it's time I'm, I want to use this Project Nessie thing I want that git like functionality I want to do the branching and the merging and do all this kind of cool isolation stuff um, what I can do then is I can just load up like a JavaScript and eventually a Python script uh, um, when as the Python API evolves but I'll be able to call that register table method so essentially I would instantiate an object from my catalog so in this case my project Nessie catalog and I say hey, I want to register a table and I would point it to the newest metadata.json file and say hey like, there's that there's the metadata.json file currently and now that table is now inside that catalog so I can move that catalog and the great thing is when you do it that way since you're pointing it to that metadata.json file that metadata.json file has all the historical information all the pointers to the previous snapshots to the previous schemas so you're able to move your table around between catalogs using register table without losing that sort of his history because before the alternative was using like a CTA as a create table as statement but then you're rewriting the table and you're losing all that historical information so now that's not that's no longer necessary so that's pretty cool and something to keep in mind so with that that wraps up this video I'll see you in the next one we're gonna talk about the difference between copy on write and merge on read when you're trying to fine-tune uh, your row level operations so we'll talk about that I'll see you guys there